I call the public work session of the Portsmouth City Council scheduled for August the 8th today uh, to order. And Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Cherry? Here. Mr. Clark? Here. Mrs. Lucas Burt? Mr. Moody? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Dr. Whitaker? Present. Mayor Rowe? Here. Dr. Patton? Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of City Council. Tonight, there are two presentations. Both of the presentations I will present. The first is a report back on the City of Portsmouth City Council Poverty Task Force, followed by the City Manager's reports. I'll tell you when to hit. Okay, I'll do like that. Okay. This evening, I'm reporting back on the broad spectrum of work that is being accomplished as we continue to move forward on one of the City Council's four big things, create a City Council Task Force on Poverty. During your City Council retreat, you specified your desire to have staff to look at the best practices, review pertinent data, deliver a report, and make recommendations for actions. It has been six months, almost to the day, since the work toward this endeavor began. And tonight, I will give you an update on what we have accomplished, where we are going, and how to arrive at the end product of determining the strategic initiatives in addressing poverty in the city of Portsmouth. Right. The goal of the task force is to build transformative, and collaborative strategies for reducing poverty in the city of Portsmouth and empowering all city residents with the opportunity to be successful. The chronology of activities related to the pertinent data aligned with the task force began in December of 2015 with the city council press conference and the announcement of the violence and crime reversal initiative. It was the desire of City Council to embark on this initiative in pursuit of determining what attributes to violence and crime in some communities. I will stay there. Through establishing a partnership with Old Dominion University Department of Sociology and Criminal Justice, the foundation for research, review of pertinent data, survey data collection, and interviews with community partners was conducted. The battery of data collected in the research lies the foundation for the work of the Poverty Task Force. We hosted meetings with representatives of Old Dominion University, numerous meetings to establish the framework and research and data collection. We've had presentations made by Old Dominion research teams presenting the kind of research and survey instruments necessary to collect and prescribe the data. We developed an agreement with the collaborative partnership between the City of Portsmouth and Old Dominion University to conduct research. Then the data mining began of the city's crime statistics and police data over the past five years by the researchers at Old Dominion University. From January 2017 to present, the research teams have conducted surveys, interviewed key stakeholders, analyzed data, and finalized the Violence and Crime Reversal Initiative Report. In April, we broadened our collaborative partnership in pursuit of data mining, the humanistic component necessary for the Poverty Task Force. City Council, as you're aware, Dr. Whitta Dr. Whitaker led staff to one of the nation and region's noted institutions of higher learning, Norfolk State University's Ethelin School of Social Work. The humanistic approach to addressing issues that create poverty among the underserved population is documented by Dr. Dean Wilson's research. There we began our work with Dean Wilson 
we analyzed the six focus areas and recommended and she recommended a better approach to restructuring the work groups into the three with the remaining three integrated into one of the broader three focus areas. As you're aware, we started out with six and Dr. Wilson working with the ODU team, the city's team, and we have representation from um, the school. Dr. Uh, Bracey has been working with us. Um, she showed us that those six that we had, narrowing them down to three focus areas would encompass the youth development, the job creation, and the transportation within the three categories that you see before you. It provides a more enhanced focus and management. Let me take a few minutes to share the strategies, tactics, and methodologies of each of these three focus areas that will be presented in detail to you during upcoming public work sessions. The education focus area, research and data, is an outgrowth of the violence and crime reversal initiative where Old Dominion's research team led by Dr. Melvina Sumter, associate professor, and Mr. Frank R. Wood, doctoral student, conducted their research in conjunction with Portsmouth Public School, three high schools. In their research, they have documented the connection between education and poverty in the city of Portsmouth, and education attainment and school climate, They've conducted qualitative surveys, examined risk factors, and report card data. They've identified family and community dynamics, identified unmet physical and mental health needs, and they have completed a draft of their technical report. The methodology that they use were surveys, focus groups, in-depth interviews, review and analysis of existing data, and the population that has worked with them has been teachers, students, staff, parents, community members, superintendent of schools, and the city manager. The results of their work will be presented to city council during the August 21st public work session. Here are a few highlights of their frame, and I've already showed them. We can go to the next one. The workforce development focus area strategies and tactics are still to be conducted and they include, and they're being um, um, orchestrated and led by Dr. Wilson, who is the Dean of the um, Norfolk State University School of Social Work. The work strategies and tactics that this team will be working, they will compile, examine, and analyze uh, and report data and actionable strategies. They will assist the task force to identify target groups for workforce preparation and educational goals. They will engage community groups, selective public agencies, and citizens toward overall community engagement in the overall process. They will look at problem identification, implementation, monitoring progress, and evaluation of outcomes. They will examine labor force projections to identify competitive markets and required skill set, while also focusing on careers that lead to enhanced economic independence and self-sufficiency, which is job creation, and issues related to mobility. The foundation of a community is built upon the health and viability of its citizens. The Healthy Thriving Communities Focus, led by Dr. Tansy Vanderkar Burton, along with about seven other professors at Old Dominion University, focuses on conducting um, a school climate uh, assessment of findings from high school questionnaires, which they, their work is completed, and they will be presenting on September the 25th. They've connected findings around safety and sense of emotional safety to findings from teachers, civic league presidents, health and human service agencies, and police officers as related to parental supervision and discipline challenges among youth. And they've evaluated risk factors and protective factors, and they reviewed and analyzed also um, crime patterns. As we continue to move forward, 
Uh, we will engage with um, this entire team that we have been working. It is now time for the work that they have been embarked upon for now a year to come back and report back to you. On Monday, August 21st, during a public work session, Dr. Sumter and Mr. Wood will present Poverty Task Force Area Research and Findings. <laughs> On Monday, September the 25th, public work session, Dr. Van de Kar will present an introduction and overview of public safety needs assessment, human and human service professional and law enforcement. Dr. Ran Randy um, uh, Gaynor will come before us to talk about the crime data trends and other social indicators. Dr. Melvina Sumter is also on this team and she will speak to school climate teacher and student surveys. Dr. Ruth Trippett will present to City Council the Civic League and faith-based leaders research and then we will come back at the con conclusion uh, with a summary and moving forward recommendations. We are also, um, to continue to move forward, we'll engage with a professional expert and facilitator to integrate the findings of the research development and implement a community engagement strategy. Engaged with city council in the development of the strategic recommendations and prepare a final report. Questions? All right, colleagues, any questions? Any comments? One yes, no. Another question. Um, on your first slide mm -hmm. uh, that showed the goal. Yes. Can you can you? Um, she go back to uh, the, the second frame. Is was this goal developed by um, Old Dominion University through? This goal was developed. Um, this was in my March presentation where um, I presented to City Council. We had started working with uh, Old Dominion at that time. We have vetted this goal uh, with um, the addition of the team from Norfolk State University, and um, in uh, both institutions working together, um, they felt that, um, and I let them know that this was a goal that had been uh, presented to council and there were some tweaks that you all made, that, that this was a good goal for us to have uh, for our task force. I, I was just curious if they had because um, it, it's, it's not measurable. Um, they, the, 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 the goal is kind of a, a broad goal, but what we are, the strategies, um, tactics and actions that will come forward will be measurable. So, so when we talk about reducing poverty, yes. that's, we're going to have some measurable um, number that we're trying to reduce it to? Yes, and, 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 and to be specific, when we had the 12, that was one of the things that Dr. Um, Wilson called our attention. When we had the six uh, focus areas, she felt, and her research and what she has done over the 30 years, that that we were we were putting ourselves too broadly, that we would not be able to have the specific, measurable and attainable. Um, goals that come out of each of those areas that we, we being members of council, will say, this is what we will work on to achieve, to address the issue, or to, I don't want to use the eradic eradicate, but to improve that area, um, which would be measurable by, or what we're going to do, what kind of efforts will we put behind it, what kind of grants will we be going for that could address the areas from education to uh, health, health, um, uh, health and uh, thriving communities to workforce development. And one thing that is key uh, that I, um, I, I shared uh, with you in uh, one of our executive briefs is that the, the grants that are not coming forth now for m municipalities, particularly governments, they're requiring you to have a research partner so that that which you are putting forth as where it used to be, the city just collect their research. You have a, um, a, a institution that is known for um, collecting data and validating research, and now the city has a research partner, which is Old Dominion University. Right. And um, also, as, as far as the, the goal, just so that I'm, I'm clear and make sure we're 
moving in a direction of substance. Yes. When you talk about reducing poverty, and then on the other hand, you say empowering all city residents with the opportunity to be successful, mm -hmm. how are people in poverty still successful? Right. The, 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 the if, if, there's st if, if we're reducing it, that means that there's still going to be, there's still some that will be. And I was just curious, how are those going to connect that we're empowering all city residents with the opportunity to be successful when you're not eliminating poverty, you're just reducing it? No, but I, I, just from my perspective, this is just from my perspective. Um, because I may be impoverished does not mean that I cannot be successful in some of the things that I'm trying to do. I'm still lack in terms of there may be, I'm not making $50,000. I may be making 25000 But those things that I'm trying to accomplish, um, I am being successful in areas of which I am focused. And this was um, it, it, when we, we, we also vetted this with um, uh, Robert Crum and working with uh, just a meeting with uh, him and the uh, HRPDC, uh, they they also felt that uh, because at first we had the word eradicate and and that was when we were first working and um, they called to our attention that that's not a word that you would want to use in this kind of process because you're not going to eradicate but you can lift people. And, and take people to um, heights, maybe small increments. But if I am immobile, as he gave the example, and I can't get to work, and there's something put in place that I am able to get to work, even if it's through some kind of something that we determine will happen, to deal with the mobility piece, and we didn't use the word transportation, then that's a gain of some success in the life of someone who that may have been a a trigger that I couldn't even get to where I need to go. So that was the kind of discussion that went into there when we we vetted this with several, right. including you all. And I, I agree with I agree with that statement. And if that's the case, then and that's what we're saying, empowering. Yes. <clears throat> then um, we know that there are some critical areas that people need to be empowered in. And you're talking, you know, education, jobs, um, income. Yes. And so if we're really serious about this, we can't put obstacles in the way of empowering people, such as if council's going to really be serious about it, you can't cut education and at the same time try to say you're empowering citizens to be successful. Those, are, those cannot mutually exist. And so uh, I'm, I'm glad you explained that because um, if that's the case then, um, there has to be a cultural change on this council as far as how we even approach education. One of the things also, uh, council, that Dr. Wilson called to our attention is that it's easy for communities, uh, elected leadership across the nation to say, uh, we want to address poverty. But she called to our attention that in our pursuit and I'm working with her and I'm working on this endeavor that we are going to have to have people who are impoverished to be a part of the task force, to be able to share what it is that they see as their struggles, their needs, and that too often across the country, uh, it's those who aren't impoverished that are making all the decisions of what we want to do. And so when you, um, uh, when I said uh, develop and implement a, a community engagement strategy, that's mean identifying groups who are truly um, in that, that um, realm of, of poverty and hearing and listening and pulling from um, our citizens as to what they see and how they see that um, w the work that we are trying to do and the we includes them in moving forward. Right, and I thought that was the purpose of bringing on 
a research institution. That's right. That, that you're not getting That's right. just anecdotal, but you have right. research-based uh, information. And so, uh, because what what one person experiences may be experience may be different than another, but th that collaborative research will give you right. that. And so. she she was quite specific. She uh, and she she's a uh, genius. Um, I've, I've enjoyed. I am enjoying working with her. And uh, you know, she just said to us that. Uh, you don't know what poverty is because you've never been in poverty. You you can't tell. I mean, she's powerful, very powerful in her delivery and engaging all of us. And Old Dominion was there as as Dr. and we met at Norfolk State as she engaged us and and made us think of just how to continue to to develop this. Um, I also um, uh, share with you that, um, and I've said this to you before. In my tenure. Um, of, of work, and it's broad, you know how long I've been on earth. I've completed a PhD, dissertation, all of that. This project here um, is one that um, is, um, I, I can't even, I can't even fill in the word what it is of how important it is and how um, our teams that are working together just want to make sure we get it right so there is uh, some impetus of change as it relates to poverty in our city that has never been taken on in such a manner. So uh, we're, we're, we're working. Uh, we've got, um, you can see what we have been able to do and what we will continue to do. And I, I um, have share with you the schedule because on Monday the 25th, the entire meeting is just the report backs. And um, in meeting with Dr. Um, Sumter and Yancey this week, in fact, we met on Tuesday morning, uh, they just let it be known that, you know, Dr. Patton, we need more than 15 minutes. We've researched, we've worked on this. We want, this is real data that we want to talk about. So it's gonna be an engaging meeting, okay? Another issue. The uh, violence and crime initiative that you opened uh, the discussion with, I just want to make sure those were, these are two different perspectives of research. The they, violence and crime initiative, that, that was started after the community outcry last year about crime in the community. And so, therefore, um, we connected with both areas in the city. Mm -hmm. um, that that was not part of the poverty task force. Well, right? the research that they are doing is, uh, for example, with the violence and crime. Dr. Sumter, um, in in the work that we started, has focused on, even before we started the task force on education and working with the data, the research for the high schools, and looking at poverty, what is its impact on performance and things like that. So what she and this data that we're getting from the violence and crime task force is 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 giving us a, uh, 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 we're being able to be catapulted to not starting from just beginning research because we had to start it over there. So yes, the, the, there's research that started with the Crime and Violence Initiative that is apropos to what we are doing in several of the areas. Right. So, but but as far as the report that comes from the Violence and Crime, there'll be initiative, two different reports. Right. That's that's why. Yes. Okay. Right. So the report that you'll hear on the 25th will be the Violence and Crime Initiative final report. Okay. The report that. Uh, well, Dr. Sumter will make on the 21st is dealing only with the educational component and her findings oh, the there. the Poverty Task Force? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the Poverty Task Force. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay. You move them forward. Yes, Mayor, members of council, I review for you tonight the, um, the, uh, the items that are coming forth on the city manager's uh, report. We have um, um, FY 2018 uh, Virginia Department of Fire Programs Conference and Education Assistance Program grant, of which $15,000 is um, being appropriated uh, in the FY 2018 grant fund for the Department of Fire, Rescue, and Emergency Services in connection with the women in public 
Public Service Conference. Uh, we have finally the FEMA Assistance Grant Hurricane Matthew, adoption of an ordinance accepting public assistance grant revenue in the amount of $448,202.32 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and the Federal Emergency Management, which is FEMA, for a reimbursement of costs associated with Hurricane uh, Matthew. That was in um, uh, when was that? October, October seventh and eighth of sixteen. Uh, of sixteen, yes. Um, the um, FY 2018 uh, Virginia Commission for the Arts Local Grant Challenge uh, is forty five hundred dollars, um, which is. Um, um, adoption of an ordinance accepting a local grant challenge uh, of 4500 uh, for the Virginia Commission for the Arts and appropriating the said fund in the grants fund for use by the Department of Museums to support the Tidewater Outreach uh, Arts Program. Uh, the next one is an adoption of an ordinance accepting with uh, appreciation a donation of $500 from the Business Consortium for Art Support through the Gold Key Fundraising Project and appropriating said funds for the FY 2018 Grants Fund for use for the Department of Museums to support the exhibit of the Underground Railroad photographs to the Path of, of Freedom. And then lastly, we have an adoption of an ordinance accepting a grant in the amount of 6000 from the Business Consortium of the Art Support and appropriating said amount to the FY 2018 Grants Fund for general operation support uh, for the Portsmouth Arts and Cultural Centers. Members of Council, this concludes my city manager's report for this evening. Thank you. All right, let's go to City Council liaison report. So I'll start with you, Elizabeth. Um, from the uh, Military Affairs Commission, we had a marvelous uh, tour at the um, Naval Hospital, uh, beginning with the historic Building One and on to the um, uh, the newer parts of the facility. It was um, very well received, and probably the most important thing that came out of that is that the historian for the Naval Hospital um, has worked with Dr. Patton's team, and they're going to tape. Uh, make a little movie of that tour of Historic Building 1 so that we can put it on PCTV for everybody to see. Because there's so much history there um, for the nation's oldest hospital. And between Dr. Patton and, and uh, Mr. Pace, they've worked out how to do this uh, with the federal government and make it something we can all see. Um, we then, of course, had the Coast Guard's birthday last week, um, last weekend, and uh, you and I were both out here waiting on the Team Portsmouth runners uh, who participated in the Cutter 10K and 5K, uh, supporting um, the Coast Guard's birthday. And then, um, of course, Mayor Rowe and myself uh, and others from the Military Affairs Committee went out to the Coast Guard base and uh, to their picnic um, for their folks, met the newest um, Rear Admiral Scott Bushman, who was here from Miami. Uh, as Deputy Commander Atlantic Area, and um, we were very warmly received. And he's brand new. He's now here three weeks and living next door. Living living downtown. He's a geo bachelor, loving. He told me about all the restaurants he'd been to downtown. He was like a Chamber of Commerce commercial for downtown <laughs> boards. It's very nice to hear. And he's a man who made it to a rear admiral in the Coast Guard and had never been stationed in Portsmouth before. It's oh. amazing. Yeah, which is pretty amazing, yeah. That's all. Thank you. Bill. Hey. Yeah, we have for the, for the personnel committee, I uh, told you last week, <coughs> contact Mr. Maxwell. Um, and they developed a brochure they sent out to, I guess, the people in, in, in their database about the, for the assessor's position. Uh, in addition, the announcement was put on the commercial group's website the International Association of Assessing Officials, the Virginia Assessors Association, the National Form of Black Public Officials, the Virginia Municipal League, and the Government Finance Officers Association. And they, they got the deadline of August the 18th for all the resumes to be in. So they'll get, we'll get a report. they take a couple weeks to, to go through those. And they'll come back and report to us be, before Labor Day. So by September, and where they are with the, what they have. And then we'll we'll have to make some decisions from there. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely.
Nate. All right. Uh, well, first, the uh, Hampton Roads Regional Jail Authority, we have a scheduled meeting next week on the 16th, so I will have a report back after that time. Uh, as far as the Parking Authority, we met on July the 27th and discussed several issues. One, we were talking about the uh, replacement of County Street Garage, and they were just giving us some of the updates, and there will be a lot more information forthcoming. As far as the exterior design will be one of the last things. They let us know that they have taken core samples of the ground around the existing structure, and they're looking at different things, determination of what the footprint will be on the new garage, whether it will be a smaller footprint, possibly taller. It's all these things that are yet to be determined. Uh, working with the uh, parking authority also in the area of the Norfolk Naval Shipyard, they've been working with the shipyard trying to correct some parking issues, and they're looking at changing some parking in the area around Port Center and 5th Street that could possibly free up 200 spaces and they're trying to do this without creating an impact or issue on the residents in that area. Uh, the Water Street Garage, the visitor spaces, that has been completed to where the visitor spaces have been changed to a two hour time limit. Uh, that way we can get turnover so people can come in and out, multiple guests can come to restaurants and different things because we were having issues with cars parking there and staying there all day long. A uh, similar issue was occurring on Court Street between High and County. Uh, same thing has occurred there. They have put up the two hour time limit signs so we can get turnover to bring in more customers to the restaurants. Uh, also one thing they're looking at is possibly coming up with a way to offer a discount to some of the employees of the restaurants in a downtown area and possibly offering them a discount to park in the King Square parking lot, which is very underutilized, and that would also keep some of the places open for the customers to come instead of them moving their cars every so often. Uh, wait on update on the police basement status and they're still looking at possible parking effects that we're receiving of people coming into Portsmouth to attend a new Waterside district. Uh, that completes my report at this time. Thank you. Um, just a couple of um, <coughs> items. The, first of all, I'm quite sure that um, <coughs> about the uh, increase uh, that the schools will be expecting in the number of accredited schools. Uh, that was um, reported uh, at the retreat uh, last week. Uh, I would like to just uh, suggest that council and also the citizens um, really uh, think about what accreditation really means. Uh, I, I think a lot of times we think that if a school is not accredited, that that means that there's something going on in that school as far as teaching is concerned. Um, I know that when my kids were in school, they were at Lakeview. Uh, Lakeview was not accredited at the time. And I know there were some very dedicated teachers at Lakeview who stayed back after school, did work with those students. Uh, you can miss accreditation by one student in a classroom failing the test. Does that now mean that that teacher is not a successful teacher? And so I, I just want to uh, caution that as we celebrate um, accreditation and, and we look at those schools that are not, that um, we look at that a little more critical as far as the uh, teaching and instruction um, and the concern for our children um, that is going on within those schools. Um, we have some excellent teachers. Uh, who serve multiple roles um, as, as far as not just teaching. And so I just want to uh, share that. I've, I've never been one to really celebrate accreditation because it only really measures the minimal, it measures a minimal standard. And um, sitting on the other side at a college university, seeing students from both private schools and public schools, um, those who may have done well and did not do well on SOLs, it's, it's not an indication of, of their college performance. Um, but I, I, I think that we, we should look at that issue a little more critical before we give final assessments of whether school is successful or not based on accreditation. Also, um, I'm asking if council would, um, if there's no dissent from council, uh, Dr. Bracey, um, was recognized as a superintendent of the year. And I think it would be appropriate for the council to, when school starts uh, back, to recognize Dr. Bracey uh, at our September uh, meeting. That is an outstanding accomplishment 
uh, to be selected as superintendent of the year. And um, considering uh, the work that he's done, uh, I think that if there's no dissent from council, that we should uh, pass a resolution and, and recognize and honor him um, at our September meeting when school starts back. Any problems? Sure. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Will you put that on the agenda? Uh, yes. Uh, in September. Yeah. You want the floor? Uh, I had two other uh, your report. Okay. Well, let me just give a quick report. Uh, the Hampton Roads Transportation and Accountability Com Commission, <coughs> HR TAC, and the Hampton Roads Transportation Planning Organization and the Planning District have all uh, written the governor, taken action to write the governor, to, asking the governor to consider making an appointment to the Commonwealth Transportation Board from Hampton Roads. It's important that we have the appropriate rep representation. Even though they've tried to quantify the allocation, the way that transportation funds are allocated, it's still left up to the board. Uh, there's some board discretion. So that's, uh, that's an important request that's going forward from those organizations. Dr. Pat. Yes, uh, Mayor um, and members of council, you have before you some report backs from requests uh, last night. Um, we provided you um, through your email the legislative initiatives, F, uh, the 2018 legislative state and federal initiatives worksheet that we're asking that council will have that back to us by uh, Tuesday of next week and we can send it electronically. We also have uh, in front of you a report back on what is the number of outstanding warrants. That is a draft with um, uh, supporting documents. We also passed back while they are not hiring promotion from the eligible promotion list. We have the language in there from uh, the code. And um, you have also a request for how many trucks uh, are we stopping that are not in compliance with weight standards. I have that report back also. Um, I have followed up um, on the request, had a conversation with the chief, had a conversation with Dr. Bracey, and we will have something next week, a one page on city manager and police chief to provide a report on impact to include uh, input from Portsmouth City School on the decriminalization of marijuana and how it impacts um, discipline or students within schools. So we'll have that coming to you the next meeting. Dr. Patton, does um, the Old Dominion research team have this data on the police mm -hmm. demographics? They have all of, all of the data that we have. Will they be giving us uh, an analysis of, because I know I asked for this last night, will they give an analysis of what these numbers represent? I'm certain that they will stop. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, we have a need for a closed session, and you have a motion before you. Move to go into closed session pursuant to Virginia Code subsections 2.2-311, A.6, and A.29 for the purpose of discussing contracts involving the expenditure of public funds and investment of public funds where competition or bargaining is involved and where discussion in the open session would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiation strategy of the city and the, interest, and the financial interest of the city, specifically regarding existing and potential future contract relationships of and with the Southeastern Public Service Authority for waste disposal services. You've heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. second. We have a motion that's been duly seconded. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Cherry? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. This is Lucas Perkins absent. Mr. Moody? Yes. Ms. Simmons? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mayor Rowe? Yes. And we are now in close. Those people that are not associated with this post meeting, uh, yeah.